In this video tutorial, we are going to build this simple line chart that you see on your screen. It is a very basic chart, and our goal is to demonstrate the few easy steps that you need to perform in order to build a chart like this with MindFusion Charting Library for WinForms. We will use the chart control, but if you are interested, you can take a look at the whole MindFusion WinForms package. The chart is part of the pack, but it is also offered as a separate product. Of course, we will be using the online documentation, which is very detailed and offers plenty of useful tips and information. We create a new project. A WinForms app with .NET 8. We name it My First Chart. We will add the charting packages from NuGet. Let's search for the chart. MindFusion.charting. This is it. We install it. The installation is successful. We can start coding our app. Let's show the toolbox in Visual Studio and see what we have there. The MindFusion charting library is expected to add a set of different chart and gauge controls to the toolbox. Here they are. You can drag any chart you like from the toolbox and drop it onto the form of your application. We use the line chart. As a rule, charts get their data from a database, so we will use an SQLite database to create a simple database for our chart. We install the package from NuGet. We initialize now two class variables. One is for the database connection. The other is a string for the name of the database file. We need to check if the database file exists, and if not, to create it. We also need to initialize the database connection. We write a special method just for that. The createConnection method uses the standard syntax for specifying the parameters of a database connection and tries to open it. If it doesn't succeed, it returns null. That's why we check its result. There is one more thing we need to do. When the user quits the application, we need to make sure the database connection is closed. We make sure we do that in the event handler of the closed event for the form. Let's continue with the database setup. After we've checked for the database file, if absent, we have to create one. We do this in a special method, init database. Let's separate the creation of the DB structure and the initialization of the data. We'll do it in separate methods.
The method that creates the tables uses standard SQL syntax to create two tables, which are absolutely the same, if not for the name. Both tables have an auto primary key and only two columns, one for sales and one for the year, when the sales data was collected. The tables keep data for the sales from two collections, one for summer, the other for winter. We talk clothing here. Let's add now data to the database. How does a data entry look like? Well, this is standard SQL code, as before. We create a command again, and we execute insertion of new data with the familiar SQL syntax. There is nothing extraordinary in the way data is inserted, so we just add the code that inserts records in both tables. For the winter and the summer clothing collections, seven records for each one. Let's retrieve the data now with the initialized chart series method. We create a new read command from the database connection. The command text is a very simple SQL select statement. Then we create two lists with variables, one for the sales and one for the years. We execute the read command and then we get the data from each row. We add the values to the arrays. Once we are ready, we need to create a chart series. There are various chart series to choose from, as you can see in the documentation. We will use a simple series class, which has just two variables, a list with the data and a list with the labels. We specify the title of the series, which is important, because it shows in the legend. Once ready, we add the series to the series collection of the chart. If we run the app now, we should be able to see the chart, and indeed, it looks correct. We need to add some customization, so let's do this in a new method called Customize Chart. First, let's fix the axes. We need to fine-tune the scale on both axes as well as their labels.
we hide the labels at the x-axis and hide the title of the legend. We need to decide how the series will be colored. The chart control uses style to apply styling on the series. There are various styles that are suitable for different scenarios. Mixed series style, per series style, per element series style. As the name suggests, they specify how the different brushes will be applied on the series elements. In our case, we need just one brush for the line, and we use the uniform series style, which is the most simple way of styling any chart. Then we need to set up the grid. We want horizontal grid with thin gray lines and alternating grid sections. After we've done that, it is a good idea to specify the chart title and add some margin to it, so it doesn't stick to the plot area. Most of the appearance properties are listed in the theme class and are accessible through the theme property, which is exposed by any type of chart. With that, our chart is finished. We just demonstrated the basic steps you need to take in order to build a classic line chart using data from an SQLite database. Thank you for watching, and thank you for your interest in MindFusion Developer Tools.